saved. You got it. Want to do an introduction, Laura? Awesome. Yes, we want to officially welcome you tonight to our uh, Journey Zoom Connect call. We're just a, a band of women who are coming together to strengthen one another, support one another, and, and draw deep things out of one another, deep calls to deep. And so that's what we're about is just stirring up the gifts of God, learning and growing together into going into uh, the heart of God, going deeper into his heart and, and um, beyond anything that we've ever known before in our Christian walk. Most of us have been believers for quite a long time, but God is shaking us up and awakening us and drawing us into his heart in a way that that's so different than ever before. So we're just walking together and we're inviting women that we know who have a hunger for God to just join us both on our, our journey connect calls as well as um, uh, the retreats that we're, we're putting together and hosting and whatever else God is up to and whatever else he's going to do. Uh, I believe God's going to launch businesses out of this. Uh, I have like, uh, I'm a futurist, so I see big um, things that, that stir within me, but I have to come back down to here and go, okay, God, we're just going to take this step, whatever it is. And we're not looking to build anything. We're looking to build ourselves up in the Lord and to help build one another to and draw one another deeper into the heart of God. So that's really mm -hmm. what we're doing. We're, our ministry is called Revival Now Ministries because it's all about revival in us, right? Being revived, coming alive, waking up, um, coming into this new reality of God. And it's now, like we don't have to wait for someday when it falls out of the sky on us. It's now, and we just have to step in, take new steps, believe God to um, do things that are different and greater and stretch us beyond the box that we're in. Whatever our box is, each one of our boxes is different, right? Because of our background, um, our personalities, wherever we got centered in church, whatever doctrine or denomination we come from. And so we're, we're looking to God to just so far take us out of the box and help us let him color outside the lines in and through and with our lives. And then just discover along the way what he's up to, what he's saying, what he has. So that's my introduction and my welcome. And if you know anybody that you want to invite, again, we're looking for women who are hungry for God, not women who just want another Bible study or another prayer meeting. I mean, praise the Lord for all of that. But we're looking for the hungry crowd, the hungry, the thirsty who say, I want more of God. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I may not know how. I may not know what. But yes, Lord, I'm all in. Whatever you have for me, I'm all in. So just feel free to invite anybody that you know that that is hungry and we'll just let each person's heart respond and then see who does what and what God what God does individually and collectively. So I'll be quiet now. And you can also <laughs> invite them to the Facebook page as well. So I believe yes. you made that public. So um, here again, that'll be a great start because they can read. Um, you know, a lot of the posts and get a good idea of what, you know, what it is that we're um, focusing on. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great introduction to uh, them, you know, getting, getting a yes. little taste and then, uh, mm -hmm. and then hopefully be encouraged to join us on Monday, uh, every other Monday, I think we decided. Yes. And, and while we're talking about that, uh, um, I was looking two Mondays from now is 4th of July. So I had this brainstorm. I'm like, how would it be if we move to every other Wednesday? That way we avoid holiday weekends. We give everybody a little bit more time to get started in the week. Mm -hmm. um, unless, I like that idea. Okay. Give, yeah, it gives us a little. Right. Gross. And then they're going to be recorded. So here again, if you miss it, you can always um, right. know, uh, watch it later. Uh, but also... Um, 
um, you know, you know, can tune in from anywhere. So if you're, you know, busy or you're right. driving like Linda is, I think, I don't know if that's a real picture of her down there. Or if she's really driving, <laughs> uh, but I know she said she wasn't home yet. And this, that is Linda, one of my uh, invitees for tonight as well. Uh, so um, hopefully she can unmute herself when we get ready to inter do introductions. Yes. Okay. So, so the next one we'll do July 6th, right? We'll, we'll bump it to Wednesday. So two weeks from Wednesday. Same time, same space, eight o'clock um, Eastern and seven o'clock Central and whatever that equates to wherever you might be. Mm. That's good. All right, Lisa, you wanna jump in? This is my friend, Lisa. Uh, hi. hi, Lisa. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you ladies. Um, I'm uh, with you from Sarasota, Florida, but uh, originally uh, from Louisville, Kentucky. We just moved down here. Um, I don't know, nine months ago and um, met Laura. Um, yeah, just divinely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, glad to be here. Very excited to, um, to see what the Lord has for us and to go deeper into the heart of God. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Good to have you. Miss Lynn, you're next. And now, and now I'm sharing, right? If I have yes. something to share, right? Your time. Um, I've been listening to Brian Simmons again on the seven spirits, the sevenfold spirit of God. And I, because I had stopped it halfway through it. And today I was listening to the, the fear of the Lord. The last spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And when he said that, that fear, of course, is not dread in the sense where we're dreading his presence, but that awe. And also that the, the word in Hebrew, it's the same word for worship. So it's, it's that the worship of the Lord. And that just brings it so much more into a personal relationship as opposed to fear. People are always like, why do I have to be afraid of God? No, that's not what it is. But also just the just the depth. I'm telling you, I just keep getting so much out of these videos. And again chewing on them they're going a lot of them go like this I'm like oh but i read something i think it was either laura had posted or someone else that even even though you you're listening and soaking in these things that they're getting in you and you may not even come to know exactly what it meant for years but it's in there so yes. just just listening to the teachings by these people and the other brian brian Gurriel. Garen, uh -huh. Garen, yes, he, he, him as well, and the, and the, the lady that was doing the interview, well, who was that? The blonde, uh, Liz Wright. Yeah, Liz, yeah. Liz Wright. Uh -huh. I never had heard these people before, and so it's, it's awesome to go down a different path too with different people. Yeah, I've that's what I'm trying. People. Yeah, I'm trying to, because to go into this next space, if we keep listening to the same voices we've always listened to. And that doesn't mean we have to, you know, forget the people that, that we like and those voices, but we have to find where am I being fed? What, what's drawing me into this deeper place mm -hmm. in God? And so I'm just trying to expose things that, that um, have, have ministered to me, things that I've learned from, things that God has answered, things that are happening within me. And then he leads me to something and go, oh, that's it. Of course, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then more explanation opens up because when we're receiving revelation inside, our mind is not fruitful. It goes, what? Anytime we're growing by revelation, you know, this woo, this flame comes alive inside of us. Mm -hmm. It opens something up and our mind goes, what? Because it's so different from what we've ever thought that to be because we just got light on it. We just got revelation and truth and this aha moment that we went, what? That's not the way I've seen it. Or that's what that means. Mm -hmm. And then our mind has to come into alignment with this revelatory truth, which we're gonna talk, we're gonna keep talking more about the seven spirits of God because that's something that most of us have not ever been taught about. We've taught about the fruits of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit. If we come from a charismatic spirit filled Pentecostal background, 
but we've not been taught about the seven spirits of God at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it tied together with Revelation because Brian's also one of those videos was about Revelation, the book of Revelation. And yeah. the very beginning talks, Jesus talks about the seven, the seven, the lamp stand and the, and the seven stars and the, the seven flames and the seven spirits. He's, and he tells us what the seven lamp stands are, the, the, the seven lamp stand, the, the lamp stands were, okay, tell, remind me, the lamp stand and the, with the seven flames. Right, the, the menorah. With the, yeah, with a menorah. Mm -hmm. And that right. he tells us that was the sevenfold spirit of God. Right. And then the, the stars are the, the messengers of the church. But then it's like, okay, now relate that back to Isaiah, where he's talking about the sevenfold spirit of God. I'm like, whoa, whoa, never saw that before. It's been yeah. there, broad daylight. It's been there. Right. I didn't see it, didn't see the connection. So that that's like that little aha moment. Yeah. It's like the, the Lord is awakening his church to this in this day because to really move into what he has before us. This is a revelation. This is a, a um, an opening us up to something that his church for a long time has not functioned in, right? Really since the early days. That's why we've long since said, why don't we look like the book of Acts? Because we don't flow in the sevenfold spirit of God that mm -hmm. Jesus flowed in. And we love to quote that, well, Jesus says that we'll do greater works than he did. But Jesus flowed in the sevenfold spirit of God. And if we're not flowing in the sevenfold spirit of God, we can say all day long, I'm going to do greater works than Jesus. But it's not going to happen because it is by the sevenfold spirit. Right. He's one spirit. He's one spirit, the Holy Spirit. But he has these different personas or aspects, just like, you know, we're a woman. Right. That's our we're a woman. We might be a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend, a wife. Those are different aspects and we relate differently in each of those aspects of who we are. But it doesn't detract from I am a woman. But I'm going to relate differently to my children than I do to my husband, than I do to my friends. There's different parts of me that are going to be revealed, exposed, um, um, imparted through whatever way I'm relating in that part of me. That's the sevenfold spirit of God. He is mm -hmm. the center shaft is the spirit himself, right? The mm -hmm. spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Jehovah. And then we have the other six branches. But see, the oil flows through the Holy Spirit himself, and it flows up into these branches. I won't get mm. too far into that um, right now, but mm -hmm. until we get to that point, because we're still meeting one another. <laughs> we're excited. <laughs> okay, so Phyllis, we know that you you did those amazing t-shirts. What else do you want to share with us? You're from San Antonio, right? Yes, yes, I am. Okay. Um, gosh, what to share? Um, I don't know. I've known Rose and Lynn for many, many years. Many, many, mm -hmm. many, many years. Um, Go back I'm to I'm a mom. Camp. Yes, <laughs> long time ago. Um, let's see, I'm a mom. My oldest is 22, my 18 and 16. That's it. I'm looking for to go deeper because recently I started also another Zoom that I've been um, logging on to here and there. I don't know if you all can hear me okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, perfectly. So the Zoom that I'm on, the other one there, it's ministers from all over the world that log on to there and they operate in the fivefold ministry and they operate in the gifts and they're teaching people how to operate in those gifts and to understand what the purpose of them are. And I've been doing that since... Um, I guess late May, late March, early April, just trying to learn something that I hadn't learned and I haven't really, I hadn't been exposed to in a very, very long time. I mean, probably since mm -hmm. Eagle's Nest years, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That was probably 10, 15 years ago, right? So um, 
yeah, so I'm just, I'm just hungry to learn how to operate in my gifts and to know God deeper because it's time and we're going to need it. And yep. we're coming up to the hour. And so no more games. That's right. Um, how I feel. And, and Phyllis is, um, is, uh, recognizing and learning a lot of her gifts that she didn't know she had. And that's where the t-shirt came, came from, I believe that <laughs> came. Uh, through a dream wasn't it through a dream Phyllis yeah wow. yeah we were we were just trying to well it, the whole idea was that we we're trying to raise money for my to send my daughter to a medical mission that she's going on and we needed to raise money we needed to find ways to do that and then we we started working the Lord gave me Isaiah 61 when I was going through a really hard time I just saw the scripture populate in my head I just saw it so clearly and he told me to get up and read it so when I woke up I read it and then I I started just doodling and that's how the cross came about me and actually Shayla, right? I don't know if you know who she is, but she, we started just talking and we came around, the, the doodle came out and we put the oil around it. And that's how, that's how wow. it happened. And we started doing the t-shirts. So, And you had no idea that you were going to be used to impact a, a, a women, <laughs> a, a group of women at a retreat that you didn't even know. <laughs> well, you knew no. Rose and Lynn, but you didn't know everybody else that you, that you, that your, your what flowed out of you actually yeah. brought an amazing blessing. It was huge the way God used it. So oh see yeah, she showed me that. That is yeah. the best rose. That really blessed. Beautiful. That crown. It looks like the crown over there. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. but, I, I told her the whole story how all that came about, and and then I think it was Denise who said well, after we put that on there, she goes, "Look, it looks like a crown." Yeah. Said, yeah. yeah that was so cool. And then it after does, that, too. there was the scent of roses in the room. Oh, oh wonderful! And we didn't wow. we didn't put roses in the room, and it wasn't on Thank the shirt God. itself. But there were there was this. Yeah. I was sitting and talking to somebody wow. right after that whole everything that we went through with the mm -hmm. what what the Lord did, and then the mm -hmm. how how the T-shirt was kind of like the crowning jewel on it. And then wow. the scent of roses was wafting through the room. It was wow. amazing. Oh, praise um, God. Yeah. I'm so glad he showed up for you like that. Holy Spirit's amazing. Oh, man. Yes. That's all awesome. Yeah. And the whole it's time so I kept beautiful. Saying, Phyllis needed to be here. Phyllis needed to be here. That's when I kept <laughs> thinking the whole time. Yes. Yes. Saving that oh, for the next awesome. one. I'll yeah. be at that next one. You'll Yay. be in September. Right on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. And, and you nice. know, the, the retreat from September 22nd through 25th, then you can stay over the 25th if you want to. It's mm -hmm. no extra cost or anything. You can just mm -hmm. stay and enjoy the beach and fellowship and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it is, we're going we'll to talk a little bit more about it, but it is, what's on my heart for tonight is that we can get teaching, but there's so much more that's caught mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. can be taught. And the this, what can be caught in the stirring of the waters of one mm -hmm. another as the Holy Spirit is moving and flowing. And when we have three whole days together for the washing of the, of the spirit of God and the flowing of our giftings and the flowing of what the Lord wants to do and just the saturation and the drawing out of us mm -hmm. that can happen, doesn't mm -hmm. happen in just 30 minutes here or an hour there. I mean, yes, he can do that and he does that, but that entire weekend is set apart. Let's see. You lost your face. There, there you, you go. go. Okay. I was trying to make me enter a password. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're so excited that you're going to be with us. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. to invite another girl, another girlfriend. So if you guys allow that, that'd be great. Awesome. And we'll, and, and we'll be talking to you. You can design the t shirts. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll buy them from you. <laughs> okay. Yay. Well, I will tell you that I didn't know how to design. I wasn't good at designing anything. I was just Holy Spirit literally has been teaching me how to paint. So I just wow. started painting. Thank you. Lord. And he's, um, he teach me how to design. And that's what he's been using to sort of heal my heart back to, to where it needs to be. So awesome. I'll, I'll be wow. honored. Oh, awesome. and we'll, well, I'll get her uh, information and put it on the Facebook page as well. Um, okay. To ordering a shirt if you, if you want one. Okay. Um, 
And, and something I might've told Lynn and Rose at the, at the retreat, but for sure, Lisa knows this, that part of my, what, what I've said from the beginning, Lord, we want to see businesses launched out of this. And I said, one of the things is we want to see somebody come up out of our group who can like make the t-shirts, who can do, yeah. so we're not just going and ordering them somewhere that we've got somebody whose business that we're supporting and somebody that's a part of, you know, we want to see that begin to flow and happen out of it. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I remember you saying that. Yeah. I see Julie Seacrest. <laughs> Can you? My, uh, browser kept blocking the login. Oh. oh. Well, you made had to it. Just Where? go to my iPad and because I I don't use Google, I use yeah uh, Duck Duck Go. Well, you persevered and you found us, and I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> it's been so, so long. I know, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so Julie's joining us from Houston. Yeah, I'm actually in Fort Worth now. Oh, you're in Fort Worth? You live in Fort Worth? It's kind of south of Fort Worth, Burleson. We have for 10 years. Really? Oh, yes. Okay. We, we got out of Houston. <laughs> oh, smart, smart woman. <laughs> I know. Oh. We think so. <laughs> I can I can say that because I are one of you. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, well, we're so glad to have you join us. This is a woman that I've known for I don't know how many years, but I'm I'm so thrilled to have you here, Julie. Nice I to love be here. I love you too. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. All right. Okay. Who else? Denise. Denise is, Denise has got her microphone silenced because she's recuperating. Uh, Linda looks like Linda has her microphone off because she's right. driving or yeah. driving uh, or whatever. I'm here. She just she just took it off. You're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. I'm at a red light right now. I'm at a okay. red light, so I'll just say hi real quick. Um, thank you for having me, and um, I'm not too sure other than I want to know the Lord uh, more, and Rose invited me, and Rose and I go back 36 years, and hmm. so I am here to do the Lord's work, and how, however he uses me. So, oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> awesome. We're so glad to have you, Linda. You're, you're in San Antonio, right? Yes, she is. That is correct. Okay. And Rose, we can't miss you either. I mean, you've already been involved, but we haven't actually met you. That's right. I'm me. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm Rose. And um, yeah, Laura and I have known each other for uh, at least 38 years, maybe something like that. Um, yeah. yeah, we go back because of business, but also have formed a great friendship as well along the way. And, and because of her, I am where I am. Uh, with my walk uh, with the Lord. Uh, she and her husband are the ones who led me. Um, I was already involved in church, and, but I didn't know God like I know God now. I knew of God, but now I know God. And um, and so that was a beautiful beginning of another uh, tie to Lara um, and this beautiful walk that we're, uh, we're on right now. Um, so for me, ever since, uh, especially attending the last retreat, I guess I've just become a lot more aware. Um, and even before that, I had a kind of little started and had a little taste of, of that, um, just because of a personal journey that I had been on. But through, since then, I think it's been more of an awareness and, and hunger. Uh, and I guess that yeah. pretty much puts it all into a bigger nutshell is the hunger, um, and, and I feel guilty now when I turn on the TV and go like, no, I need to listen to some kind of teaching or worship <laughs> or something. Um, and, but the, what really spoke to me um, from the post that you've been doing this past week is the graphic um, that you put from Marina on there, the lion. This is really uh -huh. um, because, um, because I'm also doing a Bible study on the authority using your authority. And so I'm learning how to become more bold in my prayers. And uh, that is definitely a big change for me. And I'm one who just kind of just, just prays to myself and I'll let somebody else pray for me and I'll say yes and amen. And you know, that kind of stuff. It's a, you know, but for me to just come out and 
you know, really tackle it and just really say, <laughs> what I want and really, you know, put God, you know, to the test on me, you know, it's just like, okay, Lord, you said, and I'm starting <laughs> to just be more bold. Um, but I love this picture of, um, you know, of that lion looking down and it, I think I'm going to try to print that if I can. I don't, does she have prints of that? Do you know, or do you know where that came from? Maybe I don't, she was trying to get on and she just texted me and said that she just can't get her audio to work. So anyway, if she doesn't make it on, well, I'll find out yeah. from her. Yeah, so, she anyways, has some amazing stuff. Like I said, that spoke volumes to me because I'm, you know, I, I feel like that's that lion in me coming out and that yes. little, little cub there was me. And, um, and that's, you know, where I'm at right now. And I'm just really looking forward to that, um, you know, continued growth in that area. Cool. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not the only one allowed to post on there. It's just that we don't want things that we want to stay very as focused as we can on, you know, what is going to take us deeper into God's heart? Like where, where is this out of the box revelatory, what God is saying and doing. And if you're ever not sure and you want to run it past me before you post it, not that you have to, I mean, we may eventually have to get to that, but it's not, I'm just doing it because I, you know, God's given me the, the, the honor and the privilege to be able to start this thing. And maybe I'm a, a few steps ahead in this journey deep into God's heart because it happened. You know, most of you know a little bit of my story that that after my husband of 30 years went to heaven, I was just devastated. I was 88 pounds of skin and bones and fried. And I said, God, I couldn't hear you if you were standing right in front of me. And I had, I had been a born again, spirit filled believer for 28 years at that time, but I was just so fried. And I'm like, I couldn't hear you, God, if you were standing right in front of me. I trust you, but you're going to have to help me. And then through this process of bringing me far enough above water where I wasn't drowning anymore, the Lord began to crash in on me. And I mean, when I say crash in, I'm talking so far out of my box, so far off of my grid spiritually coming from uh, being born again, spirit filled, being in the, the Toronto outpouring in the church that Julie, Julie Seacrest, who's here, she and I were a part of that church for many years and the outpouring and um, Rose, you, you know, came and, and participated in, in that. And, um, and that was amazing. But what God crashed in on me and did was like, ah, uh, my mind was like bonkers. I don't have a grid for this. It's crazy. But inside my spirit, I went, oh, this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. And God started bringing me alive and he started setting me free and he started healing me and restoring me. And it was, I didn't understand. He led me into a teaching by Brian Simmons, who is the author of the Passion Translation, if you don't know that. Um, and I, I, I took all these notes and I was like, this is amazing, but I didn't understand it at all. But yet the Holy Spirit himself was waking me up night after night, speaking to me, teaching me, changing me, imprinting upon the fibers of my being every particle in my being was imprinted with things that I went like what that's amazing that's the mystery that Paul preaches and I would wait I go I would wake up in the night and I would start writing all of this stuff not out of my mind just flowing out of my spirit and I would say this is the mystery Paul preached and one night the Holy Spirit said to me this Laura this is me this is the holy spirit speaking to you he said i am the spirit of wisdom i am the spirit of revelation speaking to you and i'm like what <laughs> oh, oh what does that mean and all of this poetry was flowing out of me and these these scenes to plays i mean i have like scene one two three four in these plays that were happening that i was writing and and i, I I would go, now I know how the Psalms were written. 
like I understood this flowed out of my spirit so far beyond anything my mind could comprehend. My mind was just on tilt because it could not take in what was happening because it was like knocking over my sacred cows and, and reorganizing the parts and pieces in my mind and my puzzle and the way I thought about God. But I came to understand through all of that that I knew a lot about God. I had loads of head knowledge about God. I knew the word. I knew the scriptures. I'd learned the prayers to pray, the, the formulas, the, you know, pray it this way, say it that way, declare it, speak it, confess it, blah, 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 blah. But there was no connection coming out of my spirit for faith to mix with those words. But along the way of my journey of 28 years, there had been enough little bits of fruit, right? Deposited because God was still there, woven in and out of all of that, that those little bits of fruit kept me going. But I, along with almost everybody I went to church with, we'd say, where is the book of Acts? Why don't we see what happens in the book of Acts? Why don't we see healings? Why don't we see miracles? Why don't we see these things? And I don't know how we thought they were going to happen. I mean, I, I guess looking back in my mind, I thought, well, somehow they're just going to happen. They're just, God's just going to pour out his spirit on us and presto bingo, all of this is going to happen. I didn't realize that he first had to take us deep into the secret place with him where we so connected in union with him that we were praying out of a place, out of our inner being, not out of this knowledge we had about God. All of a sudden, the scriptures I used to know, I knew whew, on the inside of me, but God was speaking all these mysteries in the night that were not coming out of my mind. They were just like flowing up out of me but I didn't understand what it was or how it was. I didn't understand it was the, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wise counsel and the spirit of understanding. I didn't understand that. The Lord had me in that study of the seven spirits, but it was also mind blowing to me. And I, did, I would have given anything for a group of women like this who were on the journey, who could bring me into some like oh that's what that is wow I would have I would have gone anywhere and done anything I would have been at every moment of every retreat I would have been on the phone because I was like god if I could just talk to somebody who understands what's going on because I don't get it my mind is like the plinko machine you know and the old price is right where they drop all the little ball balls down the plastic maze and I'm just I'm just waiting for them to settle so I can figure out what the prize is, right? Where do all these land and add up to something? It was like the slot machine. But all of this was, you see, for me, I've come to this place where when people say to me, I had this dream and I think it's for so-and-so, or I had this dream or I had this vision, but they're not following it with, and this happened in my life. Oh, God changed me. I got healed. I got restored. God showed me something that was a blockage in my life. And I said, yes, and it got removed, right? There should be a response. It should not be for entertainment or for just journaling a bunch of things that our mind starts going, well, maybe it's this, and maybe it's that. And maybe, maybe this is what it looks like. And maybe that's why God had us do that. And maybe, maybe it should, blah, 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 blah. If we have to figure it out and sort it out, then it's not by the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wise counsel. It's leaning into our own understanding, not leaning into his understanding, right? Because he is the mighty God, the wonderful counselor, and they work together off of that menorah. Those two spirits flow together. And if we have oil in one lamp and we don't have oil over here for them to be connecting together, then and one, one God was leading me in this journey. And one day it just dawned on me out of, it was the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know. I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, 
you've been introducing me to my father. Like I came to know my identity. He set me free of the old Laura in the orphanage, right? Who was competitive, who was climbing the corporate ladder, even inside the church all of those years, right? Looking for recognition, looking for validation, looking for position, all of those things that I was wired to do and is very accommodating in most churches. The Lord started setting me free of my orphanage ways. And I was just like, woo. And then I was coming to know Jesus as my bridegroom. And I randomly opened the, the uh, passion translation and it fell open to song of songs. And I went, what, what, this is crazy. And the Lord said to me, that's what's happening to you. You're on your own journey to become my bride. And I went to become your bride. I thought we were all your bride. That's what I've been taught. And I don't know how I thought we were all going to become without spot or wrinkle. Just magically, I guess, somewhere at the end, God's going to make us all this thing because something's going to fall out of the sky on us. Revival's going to fall out of the sky on us. And God's glory is going to come. And somehow in our Wow, what? Okay. But he started, no, it, it comes up rivers of living water flow out of us. And in the seven spirits, he's a flame, right? He's the seven spirits that are before the throne of God day and night that he views everything through. It's the flame. It's the spirit of God flowing through. Oh. That's what happened. That's what happened to Laura. She broke free. My chains got broken free. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> they gave that to me at the retreat. Oh, and it's a worshiping woman whose chains mm -hmm. have been broken. And mm -hmm. I was set free. And, and Rose, Rose knows me for many years. And Rose is like, I just can't believe this is Laura. I just can't believe this is the same person. <laughs> I knew all those years. And people say to me, have you, were you a dancer? And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> No, you know, I was stiff as a board. You know, I was extremely conservative. Like, yeah, I would worship, and 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 I knew how to yield to the move of the Holy Spirit. But this deep, crazy work on the inside of me was just like beyond my comprehension. So I'm just trying to stir your waters a little bit, right? Like, I I said, Holy Spirit, you've been introducing me to my Father. And you've been introducing me to Jesus as my bridegroom. Maybe I ought to ask you to introduce yourself to me. Holy Spirit, would you start teaching me about the night watch? I'd heard it somewhere, I think, in all of these things the Lord was leading me to, to listen to. And I'm like, would you teach me about the night watch, about the mysteries? And that's why I just like was waking up night after night with crazy, wild stuff. And then one night in the midst of all, but see what was happening. It wasn't just entertainment where I went like, what? Oh, okay, well, that's cool. That's exciting. Running around. I had this dream. What do you think it means? Showing it to everybody. I know. What do you think this dream means? Uh, you, you know, people say to me, what's happening to you? And I go, I don't know, but it's the most amazing thing. I'm like, set free. I was dead and now I'm alive. Just everything in me came to life way beyond me. It's like my born again experience 28 years before that was, it rocked my world. But this is like, I was born again, again, radically. <laughs> it was so far beyond anything I had ever known in the Lord. So these wake up calls as I would write and it would just flow out of my spirit and the Lord would begin using it to teach me. Like he would, one night he was like, he, he, he was talking to me, there's a rocket in the sky. And, he, and he's, he's teaching me about this launch, this rocket that launches up into the sky and it, it flies high. And, but you have to tune into command central because the rocket doesn't know where to go with it on its own. And so if we tune into command central, that, that command central will lead us and guide us up into the skies and up into the heavenlies. And it will show us discoveries. And I'm like, what? And then I go back to bed and like maybe an hour later, I wake up and I start writing again. I have sandals on my feet and I'm walking through this dry, dusty earth. And, and then I'm like, what? And then the Lord says to me, 
Laura, what do these two things have in common? Rockets and sandals. I'm like, beats me? What? And he said, one takes you up into the sky to see what I want to show you. The other one is how you walk it out on this earth. It's the way you touch humanity on this earth. And so he's teaching me. It wasn't just that I had this amazing experience. The Holy Spirit was teaching me, showing me. He began to say, Laura, my people believe doctrines of demons about me. And I'm like, whoa, what? And he just started showing me the things that I believed and the things the people that I knew believed about him. And he's like, this is what's right. He would show me, here's the right way. And that flashlight of what was right, right? His word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that light would like hone in on, whoa, that's what I believe. And here's the truth. Oh, whoa, I'll take your way. I'm going to believe your truth. One night, I didn't know it was the spirit of wise counsel. We're going to, I'm going to tie all this in. So hang with me. Um, one night I was living in Austin. I had left my home in Columbia, Medellin, Columbia. I just locked the door to my condo, left everything I owned. I said, Lord, I don't know if I'll ever see the place again, but I'm following your lead. I'm going, you know, back to the United States and whatever. I don't know. I don't know how to put one foot in front of the other. I don't know how to move forward. My, uh, I don't know even who I am. I mean, I know who I am as a person, but I'd been, a, I'd been a we for many years, for 30 years. I didn't know how to be a me. I'm like, Lord, without you, I'm in serious trouble. And so he led me and I just locked the door to my home and left everything I owned behind and came to the States, no car, no home, no nothing, two suitcases to a city I'd never lived in before. And I'm like, okay, here we go, God. And um, so one night, all of this is going on, and I wake up, and the and the I I, I just this thing flowed up out of me, and I uh, no, I saw a flash of light in my eye, and it woke me up. I went, whoa, like I didn't see it. It wasn't storming outside. Inside me, in my spirit eye, I saw whoop, a flash of lightning, and it woke me up. And I went and I started writing and I said, a thought comes to me, a thought that I've thought about before. I wonder what I'll do with my apartment in Medellin. I wonder if I should go back. I wonder. And then I went, it's time to sell it, Laura. I went, what? Oh, no, what? And then what am I going to do with all my stuff? What does that mean? I'm freaking out. <laughs> and the Lord is just like, it's time to do it, Laura. Just trust me. And I'm writing all this out. And finally, I'm like, I can't take this. I'm going back to bed. I went back to bed. I pulled the covers over my head. And I'm like, I can't take this. What? God, what am I going to do? All my stuff is over there. And I can't bring it back. And I, I can't leave everything I own behind. And, oh, oh, oh. and I just went back to bed. And I'm like, I can't take it anymore. Pull the covers up. I go to bed. I wake up in the morning. And the first thing I start writing... I will follow you up the dark mountain trail, Jesus. I will respond to your voice to sell my condo in Medellin. I trust you, Lord. I'm afraid, but I'll do it. I'll follow you. I'll do what you told me to do. And then he starts over the next like two, three nights, he starts speaking to me. Laura, Ron's not in that apartment anymore. He doesn't have any need for that. He's with me and he wouldn't come back if, I, if he were given an opportunity. And he said, I don't want you holding on to that trying to make something good come out of what happened. And, and he said, um, and it's not your security, I am. I'm like, I didn't even know either one of those things were my issue. Like if you had asked me, are you, are you concerned or afraid of either of these things? I mean, no, no, not at all. Well, sh the Lord shined it. And he's like, here's where your problem is. And then he said, it's bricks and mortar, Laura. He said, does that sound familiar? That's what me, what were my people in, in Egypt doing? They were slaving away for bricks, uh, making bricks and mortar. He said, they're just bricks and mortar. He said, I, I'm crying out in the wilderness. Let my people go. Set my people free. And he said, if you'll give it to me, I'll show you. We'll turn bricks and mortars and we'll turn it into eternal rewards. And I'm like, okay, God, 
I don't know how to do this. I don't know. Okay, I'll follow you. I'll do it. I'm scared spitless, but I'll do it. And I, I went over there. I did everything that I needed to do. You know, there's not MLS over there. You can't ascertain what is anything worth and you just got to figure it out. I'm, I'm praying. Okay. And the Lord said to me, Laura, I know you need to know, see the spirit of wise counsel, mm -hmm. not the spirit of leaning into my own understanding. I've got to figure this out for myself. I'm just like, Lord, I don't know. I know how to sell a house in the United States and I've sold one in Panama. So I've done it internationally, but I don't know how to do this. Ron did all that stuff. And he's like, Laura, I know you know that you need the answer to everything. I'll show you. Trust me. Just put one step in front of the other. Just, just stay tuned in to me. And I'm going to show you. You see the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wise counsel. They were at work. We tend to focus on the fruit of the spirit. And yes, we need the fruit of the spirit. Then we focus on the nine gifts of the spirit. Thank God for them. We need the gifts of the spirit, but the spirit, the sevenfold spirit, the flames whoosh, that come up from whoosh, out of us that you see everything in God is contained within us. He is, we have all of God there is. And I think my mind knew that, but I didn't understand that. That we go more, God, more, give us more of you. No, he can't give us any more of him than he's already given us. But what he can do is more, Lord, reveal more of yourself to me. Unveil more of yourself to me. Take my blinders off. Remove the religious barriers that I have. Knock the walls of my box out. Take that, that, that veil that I have that says it's got to look this way. This is the way God works. This is the way God is. We know people all around the world and people in every denomination swear that this is the way God is. It, whatever our box is, that's the way God is. Mm -hmm. And he's, this is a time in history that he's saying, if you'll let me, I'm going to show you who I am. And I'm going to reveal myself in a way that sets you free, breaks your chains, heals you, restores you, sets you on your feet. A, re a destiny is going to arise up out of you. You think one idea is good? Well, let me show you what your destiny is. Let me show you what you're designed to do. Let me show you what flows within you. And he and we begin connecting. So the set tonight we're like just stirring ourselves up, right? We're going to keep moving more and more. I'm not the expert on the seven spirits of God. I'm learning too. I'm just stirring you up. How does this begin? Because we don't learn about the seven spirits and go, oh, well, isn't that nice? I now won't know about the seven spirits. And so praise God, I know more about God. Nothing's happening in my life because of it. Or occasionally I'm having a nice encounter with the Lord, but something's not happening. I want us to get to the point where this happened and I can give you the fruit of it like that. Mm. Sometimes I'm in Sarasota because in on New Year's morning, 2020, I woke up with the tangible glory of God saturating my body. I was in a foggy fog bank, like saturated in the presence of God. And I'm like, whoa, what happened? What is this? I couldn't, I knew it was the presence of the Lord, but I could like, I just went to bed last night. How did this happen? And I started when I could finally came up out of the, this woo, cloud that I was in, I wrote down, I was somewhere last night and I, I was um, in a church, more like an event setting. And there were people with me. And there was a couple who were praying over me, praying and saturating me in the presence of God and the glory of God. And the man said to me, you will be with us in Sarasota. And I said, what? That sounds like I'm moving to Sarasota. I'm not moving to Sarasota. What does that mean? I just barely got to Austin. And I'm like, well, but it, he imprinted something. 
and a year and a half after that, June 2021, when I was saying, God, I know you sent me to Austin and you've done the most amazing, mysterious, miraculous, paradigm shifting, freedom giving, amazing work in me. But if you're not going to do something in Austin with me, God, you've got to move me on. Where you show me, God, I'm not going to just up and move because if you're not going with me, I'm not going. I mean, you'll go wherever, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I, I'm not going to win. I want to be sent. And so I, I'm going like, well, maybe I could move there. I really like this, you know, person I listen to on YouTube. And I'm like, nah, nothing on that for me. No life there. Nah, nothing on that for me. And I'm like, oh God, you know, if I could sit under anybody's ministry that I know of, it'd be that person. I'm like, nah, nothing on that for me. And whew, this wind blows through. I like, whew, I felt this wind, the spirit, right? The spirit, the ruach, right? The Holy Spirit is the ruach, the breath of God. Whew, blew through my mind. Whew, you will be with us in Sarasota. I'm like, what? That's nuts. Is that you, God? And I just started turning my face into the wind. That's the only way I can describe it. Pressing in. Is that you, Lord? Did you say that to me? Are you calling me to Sarasota? I don't know a soul in Sarasota. I don't know anything about it. Uh, uh, are, uh, what? But I just kept praying, pressing my face into the wind. God, is this you? And I, I came to this point, that's God. That, okay. So I made a trip here. I spent two and a half weeks. I didn't find anything to rent, nothing to buy. I still had a lease in Austin that I needed to get out of. So when I left and went back to Austin Sunday night, didn't find anything to buy, didn't find anything to rent, still had a lease in Austin. And I'm like, well, Lord, I believe this is you, but you're going to have to give me the exit from Austin and the entrance to Sarasota in your timing. That was Sunday night, a week from that Wednesday. So whatever, nine days later, me and all my stuff were on the road. Mm. Released from Austin released from my lease a place that I leased in Sarasota provided the movers picked up all my stuff provided a friend to drive with me to Sarasota and what well, do I know why not a clue I go God I like it here I don't know why you sent me here but you see the spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation the spirit of wise counsel people say to me well maybe Maybe you should go to Tampa. No, you don't understand. I know. I had this thing happen to me. I got taken somewhere. I didn't just have a dream. I got taken somewhere and God imprinted into the fibers of my being something that made no sense to me. But in his time, whew, the Ruach breath of God, whew, the spirit of wise counsel, blew through it's time Laura and all that crazy nine days or eight days or whatever it was later that I went from getting released like kicked out basically they're like Laura we found somebody to sublet your your townhouse I'm like when and they're like October 1st I'm like that's next week I can't get out in a week they're like well you gotta get out and I'm like <laughs> okay God I asked you for the release I just got kicked out I got kicked out. He has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, now, I gotta find, now where are we going, God? I couldn't find anything to lease the whole two and a half weeks I was there. I get online. There's one thing for lease that I'm like, that looks okay. I'll, okay, I'll take it. So I leased it. And then I'm like, how am I going to get all my stuff there? I go to bed, you know, praying, God, what are we going to do? And I'm all the while I'm saying, this is like a whirlwind. This is crazy. This is a whirlwind. And the Holy Spirit said to me, no, it's not. A whirlwind's destructive. Ooh. 
He said, do you remember that word I spoke to you, Laura? And he brought it to my mind. I'm like, oh, I go back and I look it up. And I think it was like from June. And he said, I'm about to send a wind, the wind of my spirit. It's a channel just for you. And when that wind comes, I want you to jump out onto the wind. And I want you to trust me. And my channel, my wind is going to carry you to the next place that I have for you. I mean, it was a longer word than that, but that was the crux of it. And I'm like, it didn't mean a thing to me in June other than I'm like, that's amazing, God. What does that mean? But in time, right, a few months, four months later, he's like, remember what I spoke to you? And I'm like, oh, this is the wind that you sent to pick me up and carry me where you're taking me. It's the spirit. Mm -hmm. So the seven spirits of God, we know there's this. Uh, well, let's take a look. Lynn mentioned it. They're in Isaiah 11. They're really, you begin to find them all throughout um, scripture once you see. Um, Isaiah 11, 2. And I like it out of the Passion Translation. I'll just read it here. Um, Isaiah 11. It starts in verse one, the cutoff stump of Jesse will sprout and a fruitful branch will grow from his roots. The spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. The spirit of extraordinary wisdom, the spirit of perfect understanding, mm -hmm. the spirit of wise strategy, the spirit of mighty power, the spirit of revelation. And the spirit of the fear of Yahweh or the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He will neither judge by appearances nor make his decisions based on rumors. With righteousness, he will uphold, um, uphold justice for the poor and defend the lowly of the earth. His words will be like a scepter of power that conquers the world. And with his breath, the Ruach, he will slay the lawless one. Righteousness will be his warrior sash and faithfulness his belt. So that was Jesus. But the same sevenfold, we are to, to become intimately acquainted. We can't just go, well, I'm going to flow in the seven spirits of God. It's like he has to, we have to desire and connect but he was doing this work in me when I didn't even know what was happening I hadn't been taught I was being taught by the Holy Spirit I'm like you're the most amazing teacher you're the most amazing counselor all through allegory right mm -hmm. it was through these allegories and these stories and these parables and these things that he would bring understanding to me some of it immediately and some not. One, one morning when I was praying, like, what does that mean, Lord? And he's like, Laura, the parables I speak to you that you instantly understand are the ones that I've given you revelation on. The ones you don't yet understand, you haven't been brought into a place, you know, to grasp them. But just keep seeking me. Just keep looking to me. I'll teach you. I'll show you. I'll open these things up to you. Um, so we've got a Isaiah 11, um, and it's Revelation 1, 4, Revelation 5, 6. I want you to think about Colossians 1, 9, 1, 9 and 10, Ephesians 5, 15 through 18. Those are Paul's prayers. Remember where Paul is praying. I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would come alive in you, right? Like Paul knew what he was talking about, but we somehow in our, our learning, it, like, well, I pray that the eyes of my understanding would be enlightened. And we think, I pray that I would really understand more of you, God. I would understand more about you. That's just more head knowledge. Paul's praying, I pray that the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation will open the eyes of your understanding. They'll 
enlighten your heart and bring you into this mystery of, of, of God and how he works. Second Chronicles 16, 9, it says that the eyes of God search to and fro throughout the earth, right? Roaming to and fro, looking whose heart is toward him. So the spirit of God, these seven flames of God roaming throughout the earth, looking for whose heart is hungry to step out of the box, to trust him, to, to not go, I'm going to dip my toe in the waters over here and go, wow, that's amazing. But I'm going to keep feeding over here in the same uh, place of, of understanding, the same um, teaching that I've always had. The Lord wants to keep stretching us, taking us further. He wants to show us his doctrine. He has a doctrine. You see, we have many doctrines, but Jesus has his own doctrine. He in Matthew 24 says, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom of, you know, he's like the kingdom of God is, you know, is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like, uh, you know, the field, the kingdom of God, he's, he's showing us, these are my principles. This is my doctrine. All that other stuff you guys have created is not mine. There's a form of me in it, but it's a form of godliness void of his power. There's a little bit of fruit because we still have God weaving in and out of that, but we're still looking for the fruit, for the gifts, for the, who am I? Uh, how can God use me? How do my gifts flow? It's still all about us instead of God, bring me into this place where I connect deeply with you, spirit to spirit. Stir up my waters. Um, so he wants, and, and, and Phyllis, you'll, you'll appreciate this because the spirit, Sevenfold spirit is also Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And then he begins to say, what happens when the spirit of the Lord God is upon me? He has anointed me. The spirit of God, Jesus is the Christ. You know, Christ is not his last name. The Christ is the anointed one. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to do what? Preach good news to the poor. What's good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. Mm -hmm. To bind up the brokenhearted. That's good news, right? You don't have to have a broken heart. You don't have to be in grief. You don't have to live in sorrow. You don't have to be trampled down. You don't have to be in trauma. He came to set the captive free. He came to break us loose of whatever it is that binds us, whatever it is that holds those chains where we're fearful and timid or, or bold and brash and fanatical and, 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 and an activist as opposed to a lover who the warrior rises up out of. I came to bring release from the prison. Doesn't just mean people in a physical jail, but we can be imprisoned to whatever situations uh, are driving um, circumstances in our life. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me for all these things to begin to happen. He will pour out the oil of joy to replace the spirit of heaviness. He'll turn mourning into dancing. He'll turn, he'll turn ashes into beauty. He'll begin to restore the ruined cities. You know, that's not just Austin, Houston, San Antonio, Sarasota. Those are what we call cities, the ruined cities. The church is a city. Circumstances in our life are cities, right? They're things that have had walls built around them. So he'll restore the ruined places in our lives, in the church, in the cities, in our nation. When the spirit of the Lord is upon me, you know, that's what Jesus stood and read in the temple. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me and that same anointing lives in us. So I know the Lord is drawing us and me. I know he's drawing me 
Keep just, Laura, keep seeking and keep pondering, keep reading, keep listening, keep mm, chewing and, 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 and desiring, hungering that I teach you about the seven spirits. You know, I wrote a blog maybe like a month ago, that crazy wild encounter I had with the Lord over a little deep Eddie vodka bottle. But in that, the Lord said, you know, um, I don't have it right in front of me, but uh, he said, uh, I, and I, it was all in capitals, you know, you, you are like me, but his people are going to flow in the, the, uh, the, the, I should have it right in front of me, the full distilled spirit of the living God, the sevenfold distilled spirit of the living God. This is what I have for my bride, right? It's not going to happen to the nominal believer who just knows a lot about God. So we're not women who care anything about learning more about God. We want to learn from God, of God, in God, connected with him. We want him to reveal things that come alive in us so that we're not learning more information and calling upon this external God, come help me, come use me, come answer my prayer, come help me, come heal me, come touch me, come provide for me. God, you're in me. I'm going to cultivate this garden that lives within me, that I, like Paul said, know the union with Christ. I'm so connected with you that my prayers are no longer come help me, come do this, come answer my prayer, come rescue me, come. But we begin to say, God, I thank you. You, you're not, you don't just have the answer. You are the answer and you live in me. So your answer within me, make it alive in me. Show me Holy Spirit, reveal to me, flame within me. Show me the direction, the wisdom. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation. Thank you for making yourself alive in me in a way that I'm walking with an inside out God instead of an out trying to get this God who's outside or in my mind down into my spirit. I'm cultivating this God who lives in me. And now my mind is being regulated by my spirit. I don't get the mind of Christ. I don't renew my mind and then think that somehow I renew, 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 renew. And I get enough renewing and enough word in me that my spirit is now going to line up with my mind. <laughs> our spirit is not supposed to line up with our mind. Our mind is supposed to line up with our spirit. Our spirit is the governor, right? Guided by the Holy Spirit. The revelation of Christ in us begins to govern our mind and whoo, change our paradigm, set us straight, set us free, break our chains, restore us, heal us, deliver us, um, flame up within us where our number one desire is this union with him. And then whatever it is that he wants to do in us, with us, for us, together, right? He leads us to a place where now, Together, we're going to do something, but it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. Remember, Zerubbabel said that. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. But it's not by the spirit who comes and rests upon me and then goes. It's the spirit of God that lives in me. The living spirit of God. Who is everything. He is wisdom. You know, you realize the whole book of Proverbs, you read the beginning of Proverbs and they talk about, he talks about lady wisdom, you know, uh, get to know lady wisdom, become friends with lady wisdom. Who is that? The spirit of wisdom. Solomon asked for one thing. I want to be, I want wisdom. It wasn't, I want to be really intelligent and smart. He was asking for the spirit of wisdom. To guide and lead his life, which is how he became the richest man ever in the world, through the spirit of wisdom. Did he always walk fully? No, but when he came around, <laughs> right, like 
He realized all that other stuff is pointless. You read the pointlessness in Ecclesiastes and all of that. But Proverbs, you begin to see the spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, spirit of wise counsel. That's what the Proverbs are about. They're not about don't go have sex with a stranger and a foreigner. It's all about following a foreign God. It's all about um, mixing ourselves with, with religion and doctrine and demons. And mm -hmm. instead of pursuing our marriage with him, the marriage union of Christ and the bride, the Bible comes alive like never before in this, like whoosh, all of a sudden, wow, it, it's life-giving. Where am I? I'm probably, we're, oh, we're way like way late. I'm sorry. We, okay, you know me, I could go on and on. I'm wound up, but I'm just trying to stir you up, right? We're going to keep breaking it down um, uh, step by step. So I know we've got to wind up. Um, it all comes from oil, oil in our lamp. Who is the oil? Holy Spirit. the holy spirit's the oil he's the fire right he's oil he's fire he's water he is the components the moving the motion and that oil you know the 10 virgins that we've all been i wonder what that means i guess it means that five were saved and five weren't no they were all virgins they were all waiting on the bridegroom but only five of them kept oil in their lamp it's the oil in our lamp that fuels, and it's the seven spirits of God, okay? We've got the menorah, right? It goes like this, right? There's, there's three branches on either side, and there's the center shaft. Center shaft is the Holy Spirit himself, the spirit of Yahweh. And then you've got these branches, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the, uh, the spirit of of wise counsel and, and understanding. Because if we have wise counsel, but we don't have understanding, how are we gonna flow, right? Uh, it's the spirit of revelation and the fear of the Lord that fuel together. So you begin to see this fueling of the oil and how they work together. And we need the, the seven spirits of God coming alive and working together. And Jesus, you know, we go, Jesus, only did what he saw the father do. And he only said what he heard the father say. How did he do that? Seven spirits of God that he walked in the full counsel of. He never got tripped up because he walked in the full counsel. He was man, just like us. Well, we know that he didn't, you know, his, he was born of the spirit, but he still laid down his deity. He walked on this earth as flesh and blood in the full counsel of the spirit of God. That's how Jesus did what he did. Not because he had the power of heaven as God. He walked as a man in the full counsel of the spirit of God that he related to, he received from, and he submitted to, and he only did what the spirit of God was leading and saying and doing. And that's how we do that too. Um, so my, I, my heart for you is, is and myself too, I'm, I'm praying still, God, keep stirring up those mysteries. Teach us in the nighttime when, my, when our mind is unfruitful, right? When the Lord can bypass our mind, because our spirit is wide awake and engaged while our mind is sleeping. That's when, when this isn't in the way, God speak to us, dreams visions word pictures we're not going to limit how he does it because he we're all different and he speaks each of our language right he created us he formed us he fashioned us he knows how to communicate personally with each one of us so however he chooses to do it don't get hung up on but god i want this gift or i want this to flow or this to function or i want to do it that way lord teach me the mysteries in the night Whatever those are, dreams, visions, word pictures, trances, transportations, whatever, teach me, reveal yourself to me, show me, make yourself come alive in me. I want to move into this deep 
place with you. And I, I want to, um, I'm not going to give this whole thing, but I just want to read parts of it. I haven't released it. it it's a new blog I'm going to put out. And I just came across it the other day. I'm like, wow, I don't even remember writing this. It was on April 11th that I wrote it. And I was looking for something else and I came across it. And I'm like, what? Oh, I do remember that now, but I'd forgotten about it. I left Marina, who was trying to get on here tonight, who never made her way on. I was out visiting with her and she calls deep out of me. Like there's something about the waters that flow in her that calls deep stuff out of me. And we were just talking and this is what we were doing. I said, how did this happen to you? How did it, I know how this started happening to me. How did this start happening to you? Because before I moved to Sarasota, I never met anybody else who talked wild like this personally, you know, that I, I met face to face. I heard some people on YouTube, but I never met another person. And I, I met her. Then I met this little Lisa here. And I met uh, a, a woman named Amy. And I'm like, God, I know three of these people in Sarasota. I never met one of them in the whole time I was in Austin. Crazy. But I went. And so I'm like, how did this happen for you? What, what, how did you start hearing from God this way? Like, what were the circumstances? What was happening in your life? How, how did you connect with God this way? So we were just talking and stirring one another up and, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. We weren't like preaching or teaching. We're just like stirring the waters. We didn't know we were. We were just like learning from one another and like, wow, that's amazing. And she'd go, listen to this, listen to what God said. She'd get her journal out and read to me. I'm like, wow. And I got in my car and I'm driving out of her driveway and I start singing this song. It starts rolling up out of me. Um, I hear the sound of many waters, the mysteries being revealed like the sound of the voice in many waters. And I just start calling out to the deep. Oh, I call to the deep water. I hear the sound of many waters oh some hear thunder but i hear the sound of many waters and i'm just singing and you know praising the lord in my car driving home going like what in the world was that you know but I'm, i knew something deep got stirred up within me and then uh the next day i write today as i walked i continued to sing this song about the the deep the the, the many waters and i started calling unto deep to the sounds of many waters, to the mysteries being unlocked, the angel stirring the waters of the deep, to the voice of the father speaking and revealing mysteries to his sons and daughters, mysteries that are rising up out of the deep places, both in the natural and the supernatural. It's the time for the waters to flow and everywhere they flow springs to life releasing the mysteries of God. I'm praying this over you right now, my sister. Mm -hmm. The mystery of the union uh, of uh, with Christ in his bride, the deep mystery that can only be grasped in our spirit man. The natural man cannot understand or receive these things. Then I said, speak, Father. Speak, Spirit of God. Speak, Jesus. Let the sound of many waters flow. Release them from within me. Release your mysteries that call life to spring up out of me. Um, then he spoke to me. I don't have time to go into it, but I, you'll read it in the blog when I put it out. Amazing deep word that I'm like, whoa, that's deep. And then I put my response, Lord, I feel this deep in my being. I sense the vibration of the sound of many waters. I sense the frequency I could just feel this. I sense the frequency and it is so on so many different levels. I see something like light that appears in many different colors on many different levels. Frequencies that are moving and shifting things layer upon layer, level upon level. It's as if I can sense the vibration of the sound of many waters. Like I can feel or sense the movement of the colors, the frequency, the vibrations, but they're still deep within in a way that they're almost out of my reach. So I call them up from within me and I call them up from within you. 
I call them forth to separate in our lives, to expose things that need to be dealt with, to prepare ourselves for a great sifting. It's a beautiful thing, this sifting, if we're on the right side of it, but it's a dreadful thing if we're not. I want to be prepared, Lord. We want to be prepared and we want to be able to prepare others. Let the frequency and the vibrations move and shift and sift within us. Rearrange our cells and our molecules in a way that produce life and only life. Let our words, our thoughts, our actions, and our prayers be in alignment with the frequency that is flowing from your throne. The sound of many waters, the living waters that flow from your throne, the living waters that flow from our inner belly. It's the frequency, the vibration of heaven that shifts the atmosphere in people's lives. Within the sound of many waters lie the gifts that bring forth healing, deliverance, salvation, freedom, and complete wholeness. It's the sound of your voice layered with your blood that destroys the works of darkness within us and causes the light of your life to break forth like the dawn of a new day. This is where we will arise and shine for your light has come from within us, clothed with the frequency that establishes your kingdom realm with power, truth, and life. Now, my friend, that's not me. That's not coming out of my mind. This is a spirit, a wisdom and revelation flowing up out of me as a prayer, right? This is a flame of the spirit of God. Then I write, after I saw this June 19th, just the other yesterday, I went after seeing this above in my journal, the waters are stirring. And I had a thought, could the many waters be the seven spirits of God? The sound of many waters, each of the seven flames of God represent the many aspects of the Holy Spirit, how he works and moves and releases the supernatural depths of God. Flames and water are both so representative of him as he is both rivers of living water and the flames of fire that come as the baptism of fire, the fire in the eyes of our beloved Jesus and the unquenchable fires of his love found in Revelation four and five. It could also represent the sound of many waters as in the voice of his many people who know him in the intimate depths of their being. Somehow I think it is both. It is the sevenfold spirit of God who are cultivating this intimate relationship with him those who will receive his voice and those whom will let his rivers flow through them it is a mystery indeed these things that cannot be understood with our natural minds but must be received in our spirit deep within us may the sound of many waters begin to rise within us and may the flames of fire that burn day and night before the throne of God become more than an idea to us. May they become the reality from which we live our lives in, with, from, and through him. Selah. <laughs> Amen. Wow. wow. That's wow. the sevenfold spirit of God. I, I'm, I don't mean I'm a nobody in the fact that I think I'm a nobody. Christ lives in me, the fullness. But I, I, like, who am I? I'm just a, 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 a woman like you who was desperate and hurting and broken. And my life had died and I didn't know how to go on. People, somebody, people say to me, do you think you have to have disaster in your life? No, you just have to be hungry. Whatever creates the hunger. You know, there's got to be more. To, to you than this. When Ron died, my one of my first things I said, Lord, how can I say you're who I've always said you are? And yet my life looks like this. And everybody I know, their lives look like this too. Even though my life has been pretty good. But we always say, where's the book of Acts? 
and we preach it and we say you're the healer and we say you're the, the provider and we say about why is about where's the disconnect? How can I say these things about you? And yet I wasn't questioning him. I still believed he was the healer, the savior, the restorer, the provider. But I'm like, something's wrong here. And if there's something wrong, it's got to be on my end. But I don't understand it. Well, he didn't begin to answer me immediately, but over a few years time, he began to show me, yep, I'm going to show you where my people perish for lack of knowledge. I'm going to show you things and you're going to be, hum you're going to, you're going to find out what being humbled under my mighty hand is when I begin to show you things, teach things. And you go like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh God, had I only known you, not known about you. And not known you in little bitty measures. Had only known how to connect and find you. This deep inner relationship with, with the living God. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm, I'm on the journey. But I know that if there's anything that flows from my life. Are two things that God has said to me. Laura you're called to call the bride. Not to disciple my people. You're called to call the bride, call people up higher, call people into the journey. He said, your mandate is to lead people on a journey deep into my heart where they connect with me, where they know me, where I can set them free, where I can restore them, where I can heal them, where they come into such connection and union with me that they know me. And then that scripture that says those who know their God will be strong and they will do great exploits. But it's only those who know their God, not know a lot about him. Hmm. Know him a little bit, but know a lot about him. No, those who come to know their God in a deep, connected, into way. So we're going to continue the journey. I am anyway, and I think most of you are too. And anybody you want to invite to join the journey, this is what we're going to do at the retreat too. Again, I'm not trying to sell you and come to the retreat. I'm just trying to impart to you what is it it's a weekend where we're going to splash i'm not going to be doing all the sharing because the spirit of god is moving in you and maybe maybe in two weeks when we have it i'm going to say to some of you you share what's god doing what's he saying i want you to go oh, the mystery started cracking open in me this is what happened and this is this is what god said and 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 this is what happened in my life and whatever whatever right? Because this is a journey that we're all on. This is not from, I'm going to teach, I'm going to share. I'm just kind of leading the way and, 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 and showing a pathway because this is about all of our journey. This is about us individually and corporately. We're not building something. We're not building a ministry. We're not building a movement. We are building other women. We're building God's daughters and drawing one another deeper into That's God's right. heart. And tonight, I just wanted to stir the waters, stir the waters within us. God, I don't want to know any more about you. I want to know you. I got enough about you. I want to know you. I want you to begin to teach me. Teach me, teach me in the nighttime when my mind can't argue with me. <laughs> you know, I would get up and I would write this stuff down and then I'd go back to bed because it didn't make any sense to me when it was flowing out of me. I just shut my mind down and just write and write and write and write and write. And then in the morning I would get up and I'd look at it and I'd go, what? That's amazing. That's incredible. Did I really write that down? What does that mean, God? And sometimes he would begin immediately to speak to me what it meant. And sometimes he would just keep drawing me into it. And sometimes he would unfold it over time. But with every encounter, it wasn't just a bank of information. It was things were happening. I was getting set free. I was getting healed. I was getting restored. I was coming to know this Jesus that I said, how can I say you're who I say you are? And yet. And all of a sudden, I started coming to know him. And I'm like, oh, whoa, that's incredible. I didn't know. My mind doesn't comprehend this. And that is why the next retreat is going to be called More, Lord, More, <laughs> right? Set my heart on fire. Uh, yes, yeah. you yeah. just got a great um, gosh, synopsis <laughs> of what what all this is about really and and um, mm -hmm. that burning desire really just hearing Laura's story and her passionate 
walk on uh, testimonies of uh, all that the Lord is using her for to really share with us and impart to us. So it's up to us to, you know, join in with her and want more like she um, has been explaining. I mean, to, I know that was fired up just by hearing that tonight, even though a lot of this, you know, we've already heard, but it's just like, whoa, <laughs> take us with you, Laura. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Laura. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's Laura. like, don't follow me. Just, you know, if I can be an example in the song of songs, there's this continual, right? She's moving and she's discovering the one she loves. She's coming into closer union and the maids are following her going, oh, what is it about that one you love? Why don't you just find another? But they're following and they're watching. And then she goes, oh, yes, I will be your bride. And all of a sudden she flips into this place of becoming the bride. And these maidens go from being maidens to the brides to be. So, right, she becomes the bride and these maidens become the brides to be. And then they come into this place of the bride. But guess what? People are following, you know, that journey never stops. It's weird. Just we're on this journey going, look at this most amazing God. Look at the one that we love. When we come to know this God so intimately, so personally that we love, that he becomes this all encompassing inside of us God that we can connect with 24 seven. He can even not just give us a dream now and then he can be teaching us, counseling us, flaming within us all through the night, teaching us about the night seasons. And, 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 you know, I just simply was with Marina and we got stirred up and I drive out of her driveway, start singing to the deep, to the sound of many waters. And I'm like, where'd that come from? I got so stirred in my spirit that these mini waters started going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, what? It's bypassing my mind because my mind is like, what the heck? That's crazy. And all the way home, like all 45 minute drive, I'm just like singing to the deep waters. And I come, you know, I, I write it down the next day and then I forget about it. I must have gone on to something that was even right, whatever was on my heart at the time, because there's more stuff in my journal following that. But the Lord leads us, leads us back in. And I go, like, how could I have forgotten about that? That's crazy. And he starts opening it up. So that I want you to begin sharing your stories. You know, I want you, when we come on, we're going to keep stirring the waters of one another, right? The, the, the man at the pool of Siloam, right? He's like, when the waters get stirred, there was nobody to help me in. We're going to help each other into those waters. And it's mm -hmm. the deep waters. It's the, uh, the nutrients that get stirred up at the bottom of the sea. Right? The deeper we go, the richer the nutrients are that are down there in this amazing, rich, calcium-rich, nutrient-dense starts coming up out of those deep waters. I feel like so, dancing. Woo! <laughs> I'm <tip> toe. <laughs> I know we have to end, but does anybody anybody have anything you want to say before we went, we went longer tonight? And I promise we won't keep doing that. But um, this was just setting the stage for for where where we're headed. And the Lord can change and change topics. Well, He's not going to change the topic, but you know He can change, and we'll 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 pop things in and out as He changed because as He's doing things in you. Feel free to call me anytime and tell me what's happening, or we'll stir one another up, or I get just as stirred up by you what God's doing and what he's saying. So don't ever hesitate to connect and to reach out. And I mean, that's, that's my joy. That's my, my, uh, you know, it fills my cup to, to know, wow, God, I get so stirred up just talking and sharing. So uh, we want to encourage you to, uh, if you haven't already to register for the retreat, um, and, and information for the retreat is on the Facebook uh, page. Yes, yes. And um, then we'll see each other on Wednesday the 6th. And, you know, I hope that I get to talk to many of you between now and then. And just anything that I can do to stand with you, pray with you, encourage you, give you. There were many times along the way I was like, 
God, what is happening? I wish I had somebody to talk to that could tell me what in the world is going on with me. Because this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. But my mind is like going bonkers because my mind can't comprehend what in the world is happening. And so if I can help bring context along the way or point you to something, this is all about the journey into his heart. So it's not following me, but it's like we're like this band of, you know, the geese that fly together like this. We're all at a different station, just pulling one another forward. And these the geese back here end up flying to the front, right? While these come back here and, and honk and, and, and uh, honk along so that they can just keep going. It's not the one at the front that's honking. It's the ones at the back, right? And then they fly up front and they start leading the pack. And that's, that's what we're all about so that we discover deep in God's heart and then we discover his destiny and we don't just go like me and my foreign no more and my little world and my little thing and God blesses me and and that's great if that's what anybody wants but God has so much more than that for us he has a destiny that doesn't mean a goal there are goals along the way but he has more than a goal and more than a life he has a destiny what we were created to do and to be first to connect with him and then to do in tandem with him is our destiny what we impart what 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 the song of our life that we sing maybe it's not coming out as a song i'm not talking we we sing a worship song it's the song of our life that everything about our life sings this song because it begins to flow out of us and everywhere that song is sung and everywhere the, those rivers flow comes life people get set free Isaiah 61 happens people get set free people get healed people get restored people get the oil of joy instead of sadness they get mourning turned into dancing ashes turned into beauty amen all right amen, amen. well I'm just excited I cannot I've been sitting here holding it in I'm just excited I want to just <laughs> scream and run and shout that's why I said I feel like dancing. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> We're I all so polite. We all, all want to go, amen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and, and normally I'm going to let you talk more than this, right? This is just setting the stage for where we're going. All right. I don't want you to think I'm just going to get on and listen to her again. No, you know, we're going to get on. We're going to stir the waters. We're going to stir one another up. Right, but uh, as we engage, on course. And, as we engage, mm -hmm. and as we start learning and reading and receiving and all that, yeah. you know, we'll have definitely our own experiences to start sharing, and that's that's how you know this is just the beginning of us yes. being able to catch that fire, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Stirring those waters and and, and and adding fuel to the fire, oil to our lamps, right? It's through fresh oil. We can't be new wine. We can't have fresh oil without intimate connection with the Lord. We can have an experience with God and we can laugh and party and do whatever, but unless that starts changing our life, mm -hmm. we're not really connected with him. It's when he starts changing our life and fruit starts flowing and we start getting set free and the chains are broken and we start to you know, it doesn't mean we're dancing and twirling, but you might be dancing and twirling. Yeah. You know, because we get set free and we're no longer bound by those constraints that that used to hold us in the box. The box. Okay, my friends. Yeah. Well, I love you. I'm grateful for you. I look forward to all that God has in store. And if there's anything ever that I can do for you, I'm here for you. Love you Thanks too. To I'm gonna to go to the night watch now. Yeah, I'm ready to go, go to bed. Night watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We 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 need mysteries in the night now. That's awesome. Or release it. Release, release, release the mm. the seven spirits of God upon us, yep. in us, mm. flowing through us, and teach us the mysteries of the night, Holy Spirit. In amen. Jesus' name, Amen. amen. I bless amen. each and every one yes. of them. Mysteries Thank of you, the night. That was good. tonight. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you. All Thanks right. for being you, ladies. All right. Good night, Good night. everyone. Bye. Thanks, Rose, for all your efforts to